Hi everybody, it's Crystal. Um, I haven't made a video in a little while because I haven't been feeling good. I got sick. And when you're sick, sometimes your friends do really, really nice things for you. And my friend Alice went to the store for me and got me some groceries and then she surprised me and got me flowers. Well, see, I had a whole bouquet of flowers. But one of the things that happens with flowers, you might know, is that flowers can start to die. They don't live a long, long time. So my flowers were starting to die, and it reminded me of a project that I really love to do um, with flowers. And so I decided to take my flowers, my gifted flowers that are almost dead, and use them for this project. Um, I like to call it kind of a magical potion station, but you can call it whatever you want. Um, and it's really fun. All you need are flowers. And I recommend using ones that are almost on their way out because your fresh flowers you should be keeping to smell and enjoy. And then when they're almost dead, here's a great project for them. So watch, enjoy. Thanks guys. So what I have is I have a kind of a deeper bin uh, with some water in it. You could use a water table if you want. And then what I've done is I've taken just a bunch of those flowers um, that are, you know, not quite dead, but almost. Um, and I just have a little bit of fun. I also have some food coloring here. So I love food coloring. I think it adds kind of a magical um, element to things. So I'm going to actually add, let's do a little bit of green. Oh, you know what? We have a yellow bin and we have, if we do blue, then we'll get a, hopefully a little bit of a green thing. So again, putting in the color where the kids see you put it in is great because how fun is it to see what happens? Maybe you sit and just watch it mix on its own or you give it a little bit of help. Mix it in here. Now this is something I would set up um, with the kids or I kind of also liked it to be a little bit of an invitation and I would set it up so that the kids would come in and find it. Um, and you get a lot of questions, what do I do? There's no right or wrong and as parents and teachers there's no right or wrong. So. I basically would just take flowers and you can use scissors or you can just kind of break them and just take them and put them in the water like this. How fun is that? Um, depending on the age of your kids, you can also use glitter. Um, if you're doing other art projects, you can cut up these stems and use them for collage materials if you want to use um, live materials for a collage. Um, sometimes it's fun to take just even the petals and pick it off. And this is why it's fun to kind of set it up with the kids because the kids sometimes have more creative ideas than even you do. Um, this is one of my, I don't know the name of this flower, but it, when it starts to, uh, to die, it has all these really pretty yellow, um, I don't even know what they're called, but they're petals, um, and they just kind of make it fun. Uh, you can add glitter, jewels, uh, you can even do just even the leaves and let the leaves float in there. You can do a bin that's just leaves. If you are doing a unit maybe on different kinds of leaves or you're talking about different leaves you see, you go on a nature walk with your kids and you can add some leaves in here. And then um, you can also uh, put in entire flowers with stems, so that's a rose. Um, so with this setup, if I do it in a water table, it would probably just be this, and then I'd have different measuring cups, um, spoons, things for mixing and pouring, filling and pouring, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can set up more than one bin with different colors in it. So you can do some color mixing. Um, and then another thing that I wanted to show you is if you use a clear bin, so when it's a, an opaque bin like that, 
they're really going to be looking at it from the top. But if you use a clear bin, then when you take that flower and you set it in there like that, you can take a look at it from the side. And when you take a look at it from the side, you can start to see that this flower is floating. The leaf is floating. Uh, and then you can start to talk about the concept of sinking and floating. If your child is very young, you can just introduce that vocabulary. Um, look, when I put this flower in, it floats on top. But when I put this toy in, it sinks to the bottom. Just start introducing that language. Then as your child gets older, they might ask questions or you can start to ask questions. Why does this thing float on top? And why does this thing sink to the bottom? You start talking about weight. If, as they get older, you talk about buoyancy. All these different concepts can come out of this one play area. I recommend really setting it up and not having a lot of rules or expectations. You want the kids to just explore. It's a great open-ended experience and it's kind of magical. I sometimes call it a potion station. Um, what's a potion? Oh, it's a special drink that you make for people that makes them do something. So they might make a potion that might make them fly, or they might make a potion that will make somebody giggle, or they might make a potion for a grown up, which is their favorite thing, because then when they give that potion to the grown up, the grown up has to do what the potion says, which is great imaginative play and so important in times like this that are so challenging. You want to have some magic and some fantasy in there. So enjoy take those flowers that are on their way out the door and don't throw them away yet add them to some water have some fun play explore and i'll see you soon thanks for watching